Welcome everyone. Hi, how are you? I'm Arlene with Beacons of Balance and I want to welcome you here and thank you for coming in to listen and hear and watch our wonderful YouTube podcast on balance. It's all about balance. I am missing my co-host Linda. She's off doing her book and uh, busy with book work and so forth. So that's why she isn't here today. Every month we have a topic that we, we discuss and each week we'll take part of, you know, part of that topic and highlight on different things about that. And this month for April, we're talking about animal communication and all our wonderful pets that are so dear to us. So this month, each Wednesday, we'll have an animal communicator on with us as a guest speaker. So we're very, you know, happy about that. And today I'd like to introduce the lovely Lynn Schuster. She resides in actually Wisconsin. Your business is called Animal Spirit Talker, correct? Is that yes, correct? correct? Lynn is a telepathic animal communicator, right? An intuitive, a Reiki master teacher, and an artist all combined into one, all okay. rolled into one. Yeah. <laughs> I see one of your lovely little pets yeah, over like, there. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's a little kitty. That's uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So could you tell us about yourself and how this all came about? And, you know, have you studied with someone? When I was a kid, I... I think I talked to the animals, but I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't have anybody else to talk about it with. So I just kind of shut it down. But in 2002, I met my mentor, uh, Rebecca Moravec, um, and she taught taught me Reiki. And it was through a friend here in Sturgeon Bay that asked me if I wanted to go to that class. What I found out was I really liked Reiki um, very much. And so I continued working with Rebecca from 2002 until 2014 when she passed. And she was a telepathic animal communicator. And so after Reiki, I took um, several of her animal communication classes. I worked one-on-one -on -one with her. I started um, really talking to the animals myself. And um, in, in 2014, I decided that I, I felt confident enough that I could uh, go professional. And so I've been, uh, I created Animal Spirit Talker in 2014, and this is what I do for a living now. That's wonderful. Uh, what had your prior uh, profession been? I worked in the printing field. I would did like I used to do layout and design, and then for a while I had my own little art gallery shop. I'm a hand weaver and fiber artist. And then also after I did those things, I worked at um, a halfway house for alcoholics and addicts. Wow. Wanted to get clean and sober. That's challenging. Yeah, it was challenging. Yeah, and so when I was there, I really learned uh, a lot about meditation, and so that's really helped me open up to the, you know, the the animal the animal world. Wow. So this is this is great. So have you worked on big, small, in between <laughs> mammals? <laughs> <laughs> big, small, and in between. Let's see. Yeah, I most mostly talk to dogs. Dogs and cats, horses. Um, I've talked to llamas, pigs, birds. I've talked to hermit crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who has hermit crabs, and I talk to them on occasion. So it can be any domestic or wild. During COVID, I talked to a lot of times. I would talk to the birds in my yard and the squirrels. They were they were helping us during. I was going to say, did they give you a heads up on COVID? Yeah, yeah. Did they, the, uh, did they the, give you messages? That, <laughs> yeah, the whole animal kingdom knew about what was happening to the really? human. Really, mm -hmm. what were what were they saying about that? So they they were worried about the balance um, of you know of balance. The human, here we go. Yeah, balance. Yep, they were about worried balance. about the balance, and the whole energy shifted um, for them as well because the, a lot of the humans were afraid. Or, you know, we were staying indoors more and, you know, just things were canceled and, and, you know, they didn't know specifics, but they knew that um, the humans was were afraid. Something was happening. There was a big shift. Uh, there was a big shift in the energy for, for us as well as for them. Um, and so the birds, uh, I found out from the birds that they are kind of like the internet, they, since they fly place to place, um, they might be at my feeder um, talking to the squirrels 
um, you know, and, you know, what's happening in this neck of the woods, this neighborhood, and then they fly to somewhere else and they, you know, they talk about what's happening there and then the, those birds fly somewhere else. And, you know, so it was kind of a, kind of like the internet. Um, You're the like bird. the little gossipers. <laughs> yes, they were. They probably still are. I just don't talk to them as That's often. So before, Pre, um, before um, COVID happened, were you going out to um, to clients to see their their pets and that? Did you do your work that way, or was it always um, through a Zoom type thing? Or somewhat, um, I I did um, uh, go go see clients, but I have clients all over the country and overseas as well. The majority of my clients have always been uh, on the phone or, or Zoom. And so the way I work is with a photograph of the animals, even when I'm in person, because I sit with my eyes closed most often. And I really feel that that we all have the ability to speak to each other telepathically, that we were born with the ability, but we were taught to use our words. So we kind of forgot about about this ability, but mm -hmm. all the other species, um, uh, I feel that all the other species do talk to each other telepathically. Um, and so, um, so I always, I always lead with that for new clients to let them know that how they might already be doing it um, with talking with their animals or enhancing their, you know, their gifts as well. Um, so the way I work is, um, is I have my clients fill out a pre-session questionnaire before our session um, with, a, with a photograph of them and, you know, how old their animal is, what, uh, how long they've been together and what would they like to know um, about, you know, what, what, what's bringing us together today. Then um, when I'm with the client, I, I don't have to see the animal in person. I look at the, the photograph, I close my eyes um, visualize their photograph in my mind's eye and state my intention is to speak with that animal, call them by name. When I see them moving or animated in my mind's eye, I know I have a connection. And from there, we can have a conversation very similar to what you and I are doing. However, I'll either see pictures in my mind's eye. Um, I might hear their voices. Um, the animal's voices usually sound more childlike and innocent than my normal mind chatter. Um, and it's usually back here behind my physical ear rather than the forefront of my mind, which is where I feel like my normal mind chatter occurs here more in the front. Mm -hmm. This feels like it's way back in the depths huh. of my mind when I hear their voices. Um, sometimes I feel their feelings in my heart. Um, so either love or anxiety or, you know, uh, it could be gratitude, just like feelings of humans. Times um, it's a sense of knowing that something is true, that gut feeling that, you know, so many of us have have experienced and, and really know about. And so it's all about deep belly breathing, feeling my belly rise and fall. That makes that helps me make the connection into the right brain. So animal communication is done more in the right brain than the left brain. Our left brain is analytical. It's where we, you know, it's our, our numbers and we analyze things and we make sure when we're crossing the street that um, there's no cars coming. We're analyzing, looking both ways, looking both directions. Our right brain is our creative center, our imagination, our intuition. I um, mean, everything happens in the imagination before it can come into the physical world. So somebody had to imagine um, the the design of the lamp that's next to your chair or even the chair and how what materials that's going to be made out of and if they're going to, you know, how they're going to sew, sew that together and what size. Um, so everything comes in the imagination first before it comes into the physical world. So with the deep breathing, um, it, that meditation brings me into the right brain and helps me uh, helps me relax. I also have to be in again with balance. I have to be in a zero balance place without judgment, and my mind needs to be clear of all the thoughts you know racing through. So I I need to use my breath to get into that place of balance as well. Mm -hmm. And when I'm there and my mind is calm, 
that's when I can really have the conversations. And I let those conversations just roll and flow and see. I always say, let's see where the where the conversation takes us. Now, are you, you know, be, be an animal versus human? Because I know when when mediums do readings, um, sometimes there's people that are shut off, you know, or they'll sit there like this and they don't they they block. Um, have you had animals block you also? Yeah, today, as a matter of fact, one was much more quiet than um, and in the same household. I talked to um, uh, three different animals in the same household and one was very quiet and it took a while to get her to talk to me. But a lot of times, too, it's about their people being shut down and blocked every once in a while, not very often anymore, but every once in a while, somebody will schedule, but be skeptical. And I can feel that right away. The person's skeptical. The person's so skeptical. It, trans it transfers, transfers to, to the, the pet. Mm -hmm. It's like they're trying to protect their pet. And so there's a block there. Ah, and the pet. Oh, that's interesting. The pet picks up on it. And yeah. And so, that, so then it makes it a little challenging. But most of, most of the animals really want to chat. They really do want to talk. Do our animals, and I've, I've heard this before, because an animals, their they're intuition also, our pets, be it, you know, more, you know, dog, cat, and that, they'll come if you're sick or if there's an injury on your body or whatever, they'll come. Like you hear a lot of times a dog will lick, they'll say, lick the wound, you know, that's supposed to heal quicker. I don't know if that's true or not. But do they pick up on, do they take from us, say someone, if they're with cancer or whatever, will they, I've heard this before that a lot of times the pet takes it and then they end up crossing over. Yeah, that happens as well. Um, do you think they take it away from the, from their owner? Um, they, I think are um, sometimes, but I think, you know, we really, our pets mirror us and mm -hmm. we mirror them. Mm -hmm. um, and they, a lot of times they will show us what's happening, you know, what maybe we don't see so clearly they take it on and, um, through their actions or maybe their, you know, their physical health. Um, yeah, they, they might. Wow. Take so on. that's interesting. So if our, our animal picks up, there's something physical wrong with them. Say, I'm just saying simple, like an ear infection or eye infection. It could really be us that we have, they're trying to relay it to us. That's yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it is very interesting how much we mirror each other. You know, being older, I'm old, you know, I mean, I grew what uh, the dogs I grew up, I always had, I'm a dog person and we always had what was called mutts. You know, mm -hmm. they were, <laughs> everybody had puppies and they just were cute. Now they're called designer dogs. And they're like $5,000. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and of course, you know, they ran, they ran wild and they had freedom. They had freedom. And now we've brought them indoors and we've made them like us. We've humanized them to the point of, do they feel that the animals that do they, do they have any resentment for that <laughs> as far as being, you know, I mean, they're, you know, they have a home or whatever, so they're not totally caged in, but they, that yet they're restricted. Do you know? You know, I haven't really asked them that question, but mostly Mostly the animals, I, I don't know that they necessarily feel restricted because I think a lot of them don't realize that what they're missing. But what I do know is that they come here, their their really big job is to come here and help us love, to open our hearts. That's their really big job. And so they love us unconditionally. You know, they, they begin with this unconditional love. And unless they're really you know, harmed or, you know, abandoned or abused or, you know, uh, neglected, they come in, uh, they'll, they'll keep their hearts open and they will continue to show us love no matter what. And so they're helping us to raise that vibration on the planet and the frequency of love. So I don't think that they really realize that they don't have that much freedom if they mm -hmm. if they aren't growing up with it they would notice if it was take, taken away like you know maybe a, a do dogs that get a little more um freedom out on the farm and if their people moved into town and they have to have them on a leash they they would definitely notice that but i think if they're if they're brought up 
you know, that in a certain way um, and have a, a certain, what they really like is structure. They're more concerned with their the structure of their home and feeling safe in their home. How do they feel about being dressed up and done all <laughs> the things that we do to them? <laughs> Um, some animals won't let you, you know, some, you know, it's like people, we all have our own personalities. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, I had a dog that was, that was lost for a while, a little pup, little puppy. And um, her person had a little, a little tutu, like tutu dress on her. And if it wasn't for that tutu, we might not have found her because part of it ripped on the branch oh, okay. and she was, she was stuck. And she couldn't move. And so if without that <laughs> little dress, she we might not have found her, you know, uh, we kept walking right past her because she wouldn't open her mouth and say, ruff, ruff, I'm here. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, like in her case, um, she was still a puppy and she she liked it. Um, huh. Yeah, she, she really liked it that 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 her that her people were fussing over her. Yeah. Well, you know, you say unconditional love, and I think I've always said, yeah, pets were unconditional, but yet yeah, some of them they do have at you know they'll act out, so they'll mm -hmm. do things to you on I know on purpose, you know that. So I don't know if that's a totally unconditional love. Right, that's very true. Because <laughs> this morning when I was riding the horse, she was yeah, she wanted to go one way, and I said, no, nope, we're not going that way, and she stopped right straight in front of a tree. She was like, I'm going to walk you into this tree. Yeah. So, well, you're not. <laughs> yeah. So, so they do. We were engaged. They do get. We'll get yep. an attitude, right? Yeah. We uh, we yep. we had to. I had to engage with her, and we were. In, you know, we were really engaged with each other, and having. You know, physically, I was. I was letting her know. No, we're going. We're going this way, and so you know, I had to be the alpha, um, the yep. leader of this little herd, and say, and that's what she needed as well. She because because I took charge and said, you're going around this way, you're going around the tree and we're coming going this way, not that way. Um, she relaxed into the ride because she knew I was taking over and I was taking charge. You know, so she was testing me to see um, if I would do that for her. And I said, yes, I will. Um, I will take over some of this responsibility. You don't have to. You know, you don't have to be out here thinking, you know, some something's going to harm you. Um, I will. Have I you will got you. have you gotten any messages like from more of the species like out in the wild? Like the I don't know what bigger. Well, you said llamas and horses. I don't know if you uh, work with any other you have like elephants or anything like that. Have you gotten any messages from them as far as like what they feel is going on in the world. I'm not saying politically, but what's going on in general right, right. of our world of because of climate change and everything that's happening. Are they in, you know, if they have emotions, yeah. or fear or whatever, or they feel extinction is going to happen to them soon or, <laughs> you know, I have, I haven't, it's a, more when I, um, when I see commercials on TV or, or maybe a show on TV with the animals, that I kind of connect with them that way, um, you know, the wild animals. Um, but I don't, I don't connect with them that often, but they are aware of that something is going on in their environment, but they are also very much in the moment about what's happening right here, right now. Well, as we all should be living in the now. Should be in the yes, we should be. Uh huh. They're really they. We can learn so much from them because they live in the now. Right now, I need to take a nap. Right now, I need to find something to eat. Right now, you know, I ha I need to find my den, or I need to, you know. And so they are. They really are so much in the moment. They are noticing different things about the environment. There might be less water in certain places, or it might not be as clean water or, you know, and with the fires everywhere, they get, a lot of them die in the fires, but they get really afraid. Well, so many of them, I mean, just in our, my area here, they're getting pushed out of their environment. You say like we're sightings of bears you know, black yeah. bears and bobcats and things. I mean, you know, I'm in a residential area on a cul-de-sac, but, you know, they're building things. So 
if there's any wetlands or any, you know, things are being pushed out and we're seeing things that we've never seen before. Uh, they don't know where to go. They don't know what I get, yeah. to do. They're not sure. And their food sources are um, diminishing. So they will go anywhere to find, to find food. Um, so there they are. Yeah, they are um, um, more afraid or, you know, they're more, there's more fear because they don't know how they're going to take care of themselves. It's already tough enough. Yeah. And, you know, these other things, environmental things are happening. How do you feel about pets that have crossed over? And uh, do you feel I, cause I firmly believe in myself personally, reincarnation with humans and, and pets and everything else. Do you feel they come back and do you feel they come back into the same, um, will come back into the same family unit? Oh yeah. I talk to a lot of animals after they've made their transition. And what they show me is that, uh, that we are all white light souls, that it doesn't matter how many legs we have. We all come from the same place. So I visualize, I visualize God as a uh, golden light um, like a ball of this beautiful golden light that that is pure unconditional love. And around the golden light is the white light. And that's where I work. I always ask um, to be in the white light right next to, next to the divine. Um, and when I look at the white light, I see sparkly lights in there, like diamonds, sparkly like diamonds. And those, um, I think, are all the souls. And so all the animal souls and the human souls and the birds and the fish, everybody goes it back into the light. I believe that we travel in soul groups so that, you know, the, a lot of us will reincarnate with each other to continue, continue the lessons that this is the earth school. And we come here to, to really learn and to become wise, the wise old soul. A lot of our animals do come back to us. Matter of fact, uh, my cat Sky, who was, uh, who was, just behind on the on the sofa when I was ready to to get another cat after one had passed, uh, my husband found him at a pet store in Green Bay. He had a he had an appointment in Green Bay. It's about an hour south of where I live, in Sturgeon Bay. And he called me and said, "I think I might have found our cat," but he didn't want to just go get him because I wasn't there to meet him. Right, and I, right. I, I said, "If you think you found him, then go get him." Because I, <laughs> you know, if you think you did, then you did. Go get him. And he brought Sky home, and we got along right away Im immediately. It was like, wow, we, you know, we were picking up from somewhere else. And it was a couple weeks later, um, I was petting Sky, and he looked up at me and he said, I can't believe you haven't figured it out yet. I'm Gilly. He was so he's reincarnated of one of our cats that was was at the halfway house when we worked there, um, and that closed in 2015. And and he had lived there, but the, he he had made the choice and he wanted to live um, with um, some neighbors who he was he and so he lived there quite for quite a few years before he passed but so yeah so gilly yeah so i believe that sky my cat sky was my cat gilly do you think um i mean i know this for a fact myself so you probably do also but when they do transition and, and cross over that they come back and give us signs i know for us as humans of course you know the typical is seeing you know butterflies dragonflies birds cardinals but I think, do you believe it's the same for our pets? So my my girl Haley, who passed right before um, before we got Sky, um, I knew she wasn't gonna reincarnate here. I, it just it was like she's going, she's doing something else now. I'll see her sometime. I'll see her again, but she's doing something else now. But I still see her. I out of the corner of my eye, running from the kitchen, past um, past me into the living room. Or I still hear her after we're in bed um, and everything, we're all snuggly and, you know, every, we're in bed. I hear the stairs creaking and I know it's Haley coming upstairs. You know, I just, it, the thought just goes through my head. Oh, oh, hi, Haley. Uh, come on up. And then I remember, oh yeah, that's right. She's not physically here, <laughs> but she can still come up anyway. Um, so yeah, they do, they do give us signs. I have a client who actually, uh, her dog passed and she had the water bowl out for another one of her animals. And after her dog passed, the water was empty in the bowl. 
and she knows it was her dog that was that passed because she had left the water out. She didn't actually, she didn't pick up the water bowl and, and the food bowl. You know, sometimes we just leave those there. Even, yeah. Even after That's, they've yeah, passed. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't want to pick up all that, all their things right away. Right. Right. Um, and so there was water in the bowl when she went to bed and in the morning it was gone. And so she filled up the water bowl again. And after a couple hours, it was gone. She knows her dog came in, her dog who had made the transition came and drank that water or, or that was a sign somehow that water disappeared. And that was a sign from her dog that she was okay, that, you know, she's still around or so sometimes it can be like cardinals or butterflies, but there are other things, other signs that remind us of them. Yes. And well, I that, have my own personal with my one dog came in as a moth, believe it or not. Uh, and there's mm -hmm. a, whole, a whole story around that. It's a little bit lengthy though. So I'm not going to go into, it. but this is a picture of, and I'm not a cat person, uh -huh. uh, this was Layla. I called her Gracie because I didn't know who she was at first. She was my next door neighbor's cat. She had six, six paws. She's transitioned. She's gone, but she was like a dog. She would come mm -hmm. over and lay on her back and have a scratcher and everything. And I would hold her and my granddaughter said, grandma, grandma, you're not holding her. Cause I held her like a dog, <laughs> but the, she never put out her claws. Right. Back never did anything well she did she left and i was sad i mean i bought her little my husband couldn't believe i bought her little cat nibble treats i bought a toy i play with her on the patio you know not, my neighbors knew but she wanted to be here all the time in fact she got locked in the garage twice in our garage mm -hmm. and um so after she passed uh, i stay up late at night my husband goes up to bed but this was like around midnight and I, we have the ring doorbell. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it goes off on my, my phone, you know, and I heard a ding. I don't think much of it because the wind, if it, you know, but this was, it said the garage and it said person detected. And I'm like, Oh, I'm sitting here going, Oh my God. Oh my God. I try, you know, I'm trying not to live in fear, but I'm like, Oh my God, well, there's someone in the garage and uh -huh. the door. I'm waiting for the door. So I looked on the camera and I swear to God, there there was, I saw like a light thread and there was a big um, spider, uh -huh. big, big spider. Now we've been in this house like three years now. I'm sure there's been spy, never, nothing ever happened like that. Now, Layla, when she would come in, into the garage, we had a high cabinet there, you know, metal cabinet. And she mm -hmm. would go up on top of the cabinet and lay. Mm -hmm. And that's right where the ring camera was. And I knew, because it was shortly after she passed, I knew that was her. Yep. And it didn't happen after that. Right. It was yeah. like that time, mm -hmm. that only time. And, you know, mm -hmm. and so I know, but I, you know, these things, just so our audience hears this, you you hear these or you see these things and you think you're crazy, but it's your gut tells you and you know what it is. You don't have to have anybody explaining it to you. Right. If you, you think know? it is, then it is. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, phenomenon. I, I just love it all because it's all spirit. It's what we are, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So um, so do you have any big, um, like, aha stories that even surprised you with working on um, any mm -hmm. pet that it even kind of, you kind of got, woo. <laughs> 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 that really, had, that came through. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there, that happens a lot of times. And it's... Um, it actually it does happen a lot of times but i don't always remember the stories because it's meant for the other person not for me one the the things that stand out where i go wow this thing is real um you know the animal communication is real cuz you know sure sure cuz you yeah don't always have that that tangible something. This was an in-person um, session. It was a dog that lives about 15, 20 minutes away from me, from me. So I was invited to come out and talk to this dog who was a rescue. We'll call her Millie. I can't remember her name. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Millie was there um, for about three days and she was so depressed and um, she wouldn't get off the sofa. Um, she didn't want to meet the other dogs that were there. And she had been, she had, we could tell she had puppies because she would have still been um, nursing. And she was a rescue from uh, like, I think Kentucky. And so she, she came from Kentucky to Wisconsin. She was found in a parking lot. She was just abandoned in the parking lot. 
And then she was driven, uh, uh, you know, there was a few people that volunteered to drive her to Wisconsin. And so I started talking to her first. um, I sat next to her and asked her if I could share Reiki with her. So I put my hand on, on her shoulder and she let me, she let me do that. And so I started the session with Reiki to calm, to calm her down, to help her feel safe. What we found out is that she had four puppies and she and her puppies were abandoned in this parking lot and she was really worried about her puppies. And so through her, I found out that there were four and through her, um, we found I could see where each one was and that all four of them had a home. One was with a family with, with two young children. One was with an older couple. One was with, uh, you know, a single man. One was, and the other was, um, you know, with another, another family. And she started relaxing. And then I told her, she showed me a man with a cigar and the man was one of the, the people that drove her from Kentucky, drove a ways, you know, to the next transport to get her to Wisconsin. And he was nice and he let her sit in the front seat of the car. And when she got here, she had, she's been, she was, those three days she was waiting for somebody else to transport her somewhere else because that's her life now. People are just driving her around and dropping her off. And I told her, no, this, this is your ever, this could be your forever home if you would like to live here because they really want you to live here. They want you to, to be here. This could be your forever home. And the reason I'm here is because they, they're they worried about you. The, the, the humans are worried about you and they, they want you to know that this is your forever home. And so we talked about that for a while, what it would be like to live here and, and be treated. And, you know, she'll never be abandoned, never be put in a parking lot and left alone. She doesn't, she won't have to drive with strangers anymore. She can meet these other two dogs and they had a cat. You know, you can meet all the all the four leggeds. And this is where you're going to live. And um, she still was laying there, but she put her chin on my leg, you know, so she was making contact. And so we closed the session when it was time and I went home. And the next day I got a call from her human and she said, you won't believe it. I have a totally different dog. She's Aww. off the she was engaging with my two other dogs. She ate breakfast and she wanted to go outside and play with them. She's totally different today than she was. What a was. wonderful story. Isn't that so- awesome? And that one, I just went, oh my gosh. You know, this. there's physical evidence, you know, and big evidence that um, this, something happened here. I'm going to share an aha with you because this just happened the other night because I knew I was going to be doing um, April on animal communication. And my husband and I were watching the show. It was called on Netflix called the engineer. And it's about when Clinton was in office and it was going on with the Israelis and Palestinians over Gaza. You know, that whole thing was still going on and there was a bus exploded and my husband it brought a memory back to me said, Oh my goodness. He, years back in the 90s, he was living in an apartment in a town in New Haven. And he said one day on his doorstep, a dog appeared. There was Hmm. a dog sitting there. And the dog had a collar and had a um, chain thing on, an identity. So he called the people, right? That So they came. It happened to be this Jewish couple. They lived, I forget how many, a distance away. I can't remember what time. But anyways, they came and they got the dog. So they told you know, my husband, they said this, we can't believe it. This dog's been missing for two weeks. They didn't know where it was. It was 12 miles away from where they had lived to where the apartment was. Their daughter had lived in that apartment. Uh, they, uh-huh. she, they were a Jewish family. The daughter went to Israel to go on a kibbutz, you know, to live in a kibbutz. I'm getting, I'm going to cry. She was on that bus that exploded. Oh my God. She was on that bus that exploded. So she was, she was killed. The dog, I don't think, I don't know. I don't think the dog was her dog. I think it was her parents' dog. And the parents could not, these people couldn't believe it because they said that dog had only been 
to that apartment one time and it was in the car. Wow. So you think a dog picks up a scent. My mm -hmm. intuitive hit was that I told my husband, I said, I think that was the energy of the girl coming through the dog and came back to see her mm -hmm. apartment. Maybe she, you know what I mean? Maybe she wanted to see something that was there or left something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But wasn't that, he just told That's me that. Amazing. I yeah. was like, oh. Mm -hmm. And he was even, oh. I said, what uh -huh. a story. I hadn't yeah. heard it, you know, and I'm like, that's, that's, that blows my socks off. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> but it shows you, right? Everything's energy and we just keep going on and on and we interchange and get carried yeah. around and. and yeah, so many. Isn't. Yeah, so many it's of my bigger. clients say, I tell them things that I can't possibly know. Yes. You know, and to me that, you know, that, that blows me away too, but I don't know that I, I don't know. I'm just getting, you know, I'm, I'm just getting what I'm getting and I don't know that it's, you know, and to, unless they tell me, I don't know that, you know, that how, how true that is or how much that. Well, sure, because with all this yeah. energy work, you know, and I do the energy work also, and it wasn't until I worked on, um, uh, you know, a hospice patient where they're, they couldn't, uh -huh. they're already transitioning. And I was holding the, and the person started rocking back and forth. And then my own mother responded to when I was doing it. Right. And, uh -huh. and she laid back and I'm like, and I said, oh my God, I said, this really, <laughs> this is, it's real. You know, even though we don't see it, yeah. you can't right. touch, feel it. It's, it's real. Right. Real. So it is. Mm -hmm. Is there a fact, because we have to wrap up, I could talk to you forever. Is there something, because the, the show's called Beacon of Balance, about living in balance. Can you share with um, our audience about their pets and what we should do to um, keep things kind of in the balance for them and us? Yeah. Um, you know, our breath is the most important, one of the most important tools that we have. Um, and I often uh, tell my students, the biggest takeaway that I want you to, to come away with is how important your breath is. Deep belly breathing, mindful breathing, being mindful about how we're breathing. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. During every moment, if we could breathe mindfully every moment, we would have so many more intuitive hits because we would be in the in that moment and we wouldn't be guessing so much. Um, I think, you know, the, the breath is such a miracle. I call it um, breathing by default. We're just, we're doing whatever we're doing and we're breathing and we're not thinking about that we're breathing or that our heart's beating or that, you know, our, our stomachs are digesting food or, you know, all the things that are going on on to keep us animated and keep our souls sure. in our bodies yeah with that yeah. breath work it'll keep us in a peaceful place to be with yes, our, our it, it, and it keeps yeah. them calm and keeps mm -hmm. the household yes. all yeah. in, in balance so there's not anxiety opens right. us up to open to the realm of our own intuitiveness with our own pets right right that we could do that and yeah yeah i notice when i'm sitting out um i sometimes i just go sit by my horses. I'm not really engaged. I'm not touching them or in, they're not right next to me. And I'll sit and watch the herd. Um, but when I start breathing um, mindfully, deep, feeling my belly rise and fall, it brings my shoulders down. It calms my mind. I'll notice the horses looking up and they'll see me and they'll look around and the, their body language will tell me, I see you. I know you. And then one by one, they'll come in and they'll stand with me. And sometimes they breathe with me. They'll put their nose right next to my nose. Oh, how beautiful. Three, three deep breaths. Yeah. That's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. That's it's amazing. That's a miracle. Yeah. yeah that they, they intuit to that, that they know. Yeah, they start matching my breath. That's the way they breathe. They notice, you know, oh, she knows us. This is the way we breathe when we're, you know, we're in balance, when we're at zero. Wow, what a gift. That's wonderful. Lynn, oh, thank yes. you. Thank That's you so much mm -hmm. for sharing with us. And um, we'll put your website, my um, podcast, my uh, Victor, my angel techie <laughs> production guy, <laughs> I call him. Yeah, my yeah. 
production angel. He'll um, add that below for everybody. So I want to thank everybody for being here with us, for um, seeing us, listening, hearing us, and uh, be open your hearts. Um, as always, be the change that you want to see, because that'll create our change. Yep. And mm -hmm. um, from our hearts to your hearts in total love, peace. If we have inner peace, we have it all. And thank right. you. Remember to subscribe, please. Keep us going and keep us growing. <laughs> we love you all. Bye. Bye, Lynn. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Take care.